All right. Hi, Give Hope by Poverty fans. We are here with um, Give Hope co-founder Kate Mariuto. Hi. And a recent volunteer who just um, went on a trip with Kate named Sydney. Hello. And I'm actually going to let Kate and Sydney take the wheel today because they um, traveled together on the trip, so they'll have a lot more to talk about with each other. So we're going to talk about their latest trip to Swaziland and um, Sydney's just been communicating with us before we went live about how she wants to continue helping. So that's always our, our hope and dream too. That's the number one goal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess it's been um, like not, I don't know, we traveled last summer together at the end yeah, of the last summer, August. The whole year, um, which feels like yesterday, by the way, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> and you actually had a great um, uh, opportunity to travel to um, another uh, travel to Cape Town beforehand mm -hmm. um, before you came to Swaziland. So we're going to talk about that a little bit too because that was a really nice experience that you got. But actually, I think you might be one of the only people that did that before before you went to Swaziland. So, so let's just start. What inspired you to travel to Swaziland? Um, okay, so like I had never heard of Swaziland specifically before Give Hope Fight Poverty. Um, so I was more or less just looking for like a missions trip in general. I was just really interested in going on a mission a missions trip. Um, and I was doing a ton of research on my own, just like Googling missions trips. And I kept coming across like these groups of 40 and 50 people that would go on these like massive trips to places and they would have so many rules where like you can't touch the kids and you can't really play with the kids and it's very uh separated almost mm -hmm. and so uh finally like one of my friends uh she had gone on a trip in the past she actually told me about give hope by poverty and you guys are located in my hometown which was like perfect um and then yeah i just i started researching you guys a little bit and then i kind of came across Swaziland from you guys and it was awesome Nice. <laughs> and I loved, I just loved how tiny like those trips were. Yeah. You know, like four to five people. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, being a leader of said trip, I also enjoy it that way too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when we were there, it was actually one of the, um, the very beginning of our um, sponsorship of Say Two. And I know mm -hmm. that like his hardworking self uh, really, really like touched you and inspired you. So could you talk uh, more about him or like what it was about him or even any other of the kiddos that you like just still think about? Cause it has been, you know, a handful of months now. So who's still hanging yeah. out there? Yeah, um, yeah. so I would say a couple of them besides uh, Say Two would be like Pilo and Mazwi. Just, I mean, they're like those two kids. I don't know. They're just, they're like the happiest two people. So they, I loved being around them. Um, but with Say Two specifically, we hung out with him for like an entire day one day. And me and him, he loved my camera. He had never seen a camera, like a big DSLR, like Nikon camera. And so he loved the camera and he was asking me all these questions. And I gave him the camera, taught him how to use it and everything. And he just went around for like four or five hours, just like teaching the other kids how to use my camera. And I just, I loved that he was so interested in it. So mm -hmm. I don't, it was just, he was like. And he's got a good eye too. Yeah, like no, he was taking like phenomenal pictures. I'm like going through them afterwards. And I was like, say to you, you've taken like way better pictures than I've taken pictures. Like he was making fun of the other kids. Like you're, you can't even <laughs> take them. Like I'm so much better. I was just like, oh my goodness. It was so cute. It was, yeah. That, and I remember, you know, picking you guys up after that day and then, you know, having Matt say to you at the very beginning, being kind of shy and reserved. And then by the end yeah. of the day, he had just really opened up specifically to you um, to you guys, you and the other volunteers, which was wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you travel, like I said, you traveled to Cape Town beforehand. And um, what do you think about the differences between the two areas, you know, being on the same, the same part of the world, same continent, but um, different worlds, I suppose, at the same time? Yeah. So they are, it's, so I was trying, I don't even know how, it's so difficult to explain. Like, um, I would say the best way to explain it is just that they are both, they both have a very developed like downtown central area, which I just find fascinating. And then like, no one really knows when they stay in those central areas, like what it's like on the outside, because I would even find myself in Cape Town kind of going to the outskirts and seeing like much more like poverty stricken areas. And like, you can just tell when you hit that wall where you know what I mean like, like mm -hmm. things just kind of change and I, I saw that in Cape Town as well um, but I think the best way to explain it is just like in Cape Town it seems like people are living less below, like they're living below their means but in Swaziland it's like a, like you're fighting to survive like you're not just mm -hmm. living with too little of money but you're like you're fighting to, to live until tomorrow you know and it's mm -hmm. it is a very it's a different feeling for sure it was it was very different in Cape Town <laughs> yeah yeah I bet <laughs> 
The um, other thing I, that I always think of when I was in Cape Town and Johannesburg is that there's a way bigger um, difference between like the wealthy and the poor. Where in Swaziland, mm -hmm. it just seems like the community is a little bit more, unfortunately, I guess, they're all poor or, yeah, yeah. but they all, the, there's like a community feel to it where they mm -hmm. are all maybe equally poor, but they're so um, driven to help each other. Like they're sharing, we had one kid that was delivering avocados to another family that we support. And then that family was giving them some extra rice they had and whatever, where in Cape Town, I think, and this was just from my short time being there, it seems like they were a little more concerned with like, how we are here in America of like keeping up with the Joneses and trying to have more and look like we have more and whatever, where um, the atmosphere in Swaziland is much more like calm and welcoming and giving and sharing. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's why, you know, I love, I love being in Swaziland. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's actually, that's something I think about all the time. Whenever I talk about Swaziland, I always tell people that like we met, I remember one family specifically, and I don't think it's one that Give Hope fights with or um, works with like specifically. I think we just happened to be around this family. Um, but they were saying how they had like taken in a neighbor's baby because the neighbors had passed away. And so they had to like, there was no family to take the baby. So they ended up taking this baby. And like, I just can't, I can't remember who exactly it was, but she was like telling, saying how like she couldn't afford her own children. And now she has like, she has no choice but to take her neighbor. Like, but you would never hear of something like that here. I don't think where someone is just so willing to like take their, their next door neighbor's child and like raise it, you know, well, specifically someone so willing that doesn't have much. I feel like right. it's like within your means, you know, like, you know, obviously there's plenty of people all around the world that like, you know, adopt or take in other kids, but it's like within me, you know, like it just, that's what I think strikes me personally in Swaziland. It's mm -hmm. like the little bit that they have, a lot of times they still make it stretch that much yeah. further to, to help a neighbor or whatever. So that's awesome. That's what we all love Swaziland. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone so, in Chicago okay. is sick of hearing me talk about it all the time. <laughs> we love Chicago too. <laughs> I know. Every time I bring it up, they're like, yeah, you, you love Swaziland. Like we know, we know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So um, what would you tell someone just considering traveling with us specifically? I mean, not traveling around, but traveling with us. Cause this hopefully is going to get more people who are considering traveling go. Yes, I want to. <laughs> and you travel right. with, don't talk yeah. to me. I would say like anyone considering doing it, just like moving forward and, and doing it. Like you have to, I think it's really easy to like talk about and like say that you really want to go. And like, I have tons of friends that have told me, of course, yeah, I really want to go. It's like, it's, it sounds so cool, but I think it takes like, it takes a little extra something yeah. like click the button and actually move, like move forward with it and dedicate yourself to like raising the money or saving the money. And, mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Like figuring out the process and having, having to move forward with it, I think people kind of yeah. struggle with. So that and would that's, be like, That's the thing I always suggest too, is we have trips planned even a year in advance. So even if you don't mm -hmm. have the money today, you can still pull the trigger today and you can do the deposit today, which isn't all that much. And then like you did, Sydney, and like a lot of our recent um, volunteers who just came back in May did was they, they raised the money between now and their actual trip time. Yeah. So if the, if the finances is something that's bringing you to a halt, you can always do the deposit now and then sign up for a trip a year from now even and mm -hmm. give yourself that amount of time to raise to raise the rest of the money. I, I agree. Like pulling the trigger is really the hardest part. It yeah. is. It's like making an appointment for the dentist. I can't seem to make the appointment. But I have no problem getting to it. You know? <laughs> right. No, exactly. But yeah, that, I, I think that's like, I don't know. I, for some reason, people have like a really hard time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's kind of it's taking like, this step. Um, is there anything that uh, just specific about you know we we travel? Um, it's not you know deluxe accommodations, <laughs> 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 um, but you know, they're fine. They're lovely, uh, yeah. and you know, we don't eat. You know, like we you know we, it's the the eating is definitely also really uh, kind of what we do. Like you know, how would you? Describe someone that's worried about like, well, wait, where do I stay? And yeah. I mean, I would say, I don't know if I was expecting like worse than other people would, but it was 10 times better than what I was expecting. Okay, like yeah. I really, ex <laughs> like I expected to be staying in almost like, like a homestead, 
like mm-hmm. the people that we were going to be helping. Like I really yeah. expected to be living like them with them and, mm-hmm. and stuff. So I was like really surprised that we had two bathrooms to choose from. You can go outside and shower. You can stay inside and shower and have like a full bathtub. We had a refrigerator so you can have like any, any yeah. cold food. And yeah. I mean, there's a grocery store with like complete like food, like regular food. Like I didn't mm-hmm. think any of the accommodations were just, like, I, I couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Like, my mom, who is very, like, clean and very, like, org- like, I think she would be fine to go. And I think, you know okay. what I mean? There's, yeah, there's yeah. Okay. no real concern at all. <laughs> um, and so just thinking a little more about, like, your trip in general and, like, what you took from it. What skills do you think that you took away? Like, maybe professional, emotional, spiritual, like, what are, like, what do you carry with you, I guess? Yeah, um, I would say just like, I I hate to say just like the cliche, but like you have like a different kind of an appreciation. And like, I think you expect it to be for like your stuff, like you appreciate all the things you have. But like, I appreciate like being around those types of people, like the types of people in Swaziland who have nothing but are so happy. And they're just like, like their life to them is is perfect. Like they just, they love every day. And so um, I think just like bringing that here and taking that and just, realizing if they're that happy then like i i can't come back here and not be happy like you know i have no you have no reason to be unhappy yeah appreciative for sure yeah definitely <laughs> um and then you know uh this is kind of the same thing but just i don't know a random um from someone such as myself that can get a little emo deep or whatever like <laughs> what do you find like is are there random weird things that happen is there a moment in life that like continually or that you were surprised that it made you think of Swaziland or um I don't know I I I find myself like like a lot of times when I even just have a moment of silence that's where my brain goes but mm-hmm. I obviously I'm co-founder I travel a lot you know but I don't I always am wondering if you know, folks that have been there one or a couple times and like the impact if they have something that's like, you know, pops in their head, their time or whatever. <laughs> I'm not making sense maybe, but yeah, no, you are. Um, <laughs> I don't like it's, it's hard to describe because I feel like I'm triggered by it a lot. Like I think there's a lot of things that's like change, like that I start thinking about give hope or just the trip in general. I feel like I think about it honestly, like seriously, like once a day, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know if that's yeah. weird. Like I think about it so often <laughs> and I think about it like, every time I hear someone talk about Africa, South Africa, anything, like, I feel like that's just where my head goes. And so I, mm-hmm. anytime I feel like I can help, like just when, like I'm traveling soon, so I'm just getting rid of everything I have. And I'm just like thinking constantly of like what I can give and what I have and like what I can mm-hmm. do. And I think that's like, my brain didn't used to go there. And now it just kind gotcha. of goes there. Okay. Like naturally almost. Well, that's, that's, nice. that's a great thing too that you were just saying is I think a lot of people think they have to have a lot of money to be able to be helpful or they have to have, you know, time to be able to go to Swaziland with us to be helpful. But a lot of the things that are helpful are things that um, aren't money necessarily. Like Kate just donated her old phone and we can put a Swazi SIM card in it and it can work in Swaziland. And that can be not only like a safety thing for our kids to have access to that, to be able to call our local leaders, but it's also something that they can use for educational purposes. Um, Universities in Swaziland are just like universities here. You can use Blackboard, use the internet to do research, use all that stuff. And our kids don't have access without a phone or a laptop. So that like old phones, old laptops that are really slow for us actually are great for them. Mm -hmm. Um, Clothes, like every time Kate and I go, we wear whatever we're wearing, we leave behind with the kids. Um, they all get to pick through it, you know, and keep stuff. But then we, Pilo, the one you were talking about earlier, she actually has a clothing resale business now where she sells our American clothes for <laughs> cash. And she actually- I'm not surprised at all. She moved up from the candy business. Exactly. <laughs> She's a hustler, man. I love it. I know. <laughs> I asked her how she sells it. And she said she goes door to door with this bag of clothes and shoes from us and sells mm-hmm. it. Last time she made enough money to send her and Mazwi to- an Easter church camp and she was so excited about it. So, so you know, Kate Kate and I have a limited amount of clothes and we go all the time. And so we often, even just old clothes that people have, like we can use those. We can wear them when we're in Swaziland, even if they don't actually fit us. Like Kate and I look goofy when we're in Swaziland. (laughs) I wear things 10 sizes too big and Kate wears blazers as jackets because (laughs) wants to leave them behind for the kids, you know? So we'll (laughs) we'll take pretty much anything. Um, like we're doing a shoe drive right now and we turn the shoes into cash, whatever shoes we can't take to Swaziland. We've raised about $1,300 now off of people's mm-hmm. old shoes. Um, book drives. We raised a few hundred dollars on books that we can't take to Swaziland, like adult romance novels and things. 
<laughs> and then the other books that we can't take, of course we do. So we're always um, able to, to, to use your old junk, basically. So anybody who's looking to purge like Sydney's doing right now, like we can yeah. definitely. Um, yeah. And every once in a while we get something donated that maybe you wear for two trips because it's that great. <laughs> <laughs> But just maybe. Um, I don't have any. I'm trying to think of any more. I don't know if I have any more questions. Annie, um, I'm trying to think of the other. The other well, like Sydney, what do you have anything else you'd like to share? <laughs> um, I really about, don't. Um, mm -hmm. I really don't. I just think, I don't know. I, I would tell anybody just to go for it, <laughs> to do it. I, I always recommend traveling to if you can, um, if you have the means and the time to travel before or after. Um, Swaziland as well. It's a great opportunity just to travel. Um, but yeah, I think everyone should just go for it. Don't I'm be afraid of any amazing driving. <laughs> what did you say? I'm sorry. I said, don't be afraid of our amazing driving. The driving in Swaziland? Yes. Oh my Nothing. gosh. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. It's, yeah, it's, but it's okay. There was a couple times where we had to just get out and walk because it was just going to be like easier. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're afraid of walking, no. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to tag Sydney so that you guys can contact her. You guys know you can contact me and Kate anytime, but sometimes people like to contact um, volunteers to get, you know, Kate and I sell this night and day because it's, right. you know, it's passion. So <laughs> you can always contact Sydney and get um, a non biased view, which. Right. <laughs> and thank you so much, Sydney, for being with us. Yes, yeah, thank of course. you, Sydney. Absolutely. <laughs>